Hey, it's Preeti again, and I'm back with the Ask Preeti series, and this is week number two. Um, this week's question is a very interesting one, and one that I actually get pretty commonly. And so let's go ahead and read it. He says, I've been teaching myself to code for almost a year now. I initially started from Free Code Camp and other tutorials. And the more I learn about web technologies like JavaScript, the more I want to learn lower level languages like C++. A part of me wants to go back to college to study computer science. I've done a little bit of research, and many seem to say that it's not necessary, but I want to be marketable for a career in software development. I have read that the industry is being flooded with junior developers that don't know enough to be productive. So I suppose that is why I think I need to go back to school. I had been applying to companies that fit my skill set, and I haven't ha received one response regarding an interview. I'd really appreciate your advice on whether I should bite the bullet and go back to college, or just keep getting better at JavaScript and web technologies like React and Angular? This is actually a very common question I get, and actually one that I also had when I was getting started with programming. And I'll kind of start off by saying that there's really no silver bullet answer per se, because it really just depends on you and honestly your circumstances, your timing, obviously, and all that, and what you can afford. Um, but I can share you kind of my decision process for how I thought through this decision of whether I should go back to college if I want to become a programmer. And I kind of outlined my decision process in my blog post on why I left the best job in the world. So if you want a more detailed explanation of how I thought through this, you can read that blog post. Um, but let's just get started. So I felt that for me, I was already in a full-time job, right? And so for me, I felt like if there's any way to learn to, to for me to learn the skills of becoming a programmer without going back to college, I was 100% for it. Um, and the reason is because for one, it's way cheaper, right? Um, like, if I go to back to college, the tuition for college is, what, like, anywhere between 10, 20, 40K a year, and um, I already had paid off, I, I already had a four-year degree, so I'd paid off already, like, $90,000 in student loans, and I was like, oh, I really don't want to take, take out loans to go to college again. And secondly, it's, it's, uh, I wanted a faster path. Um, when I want something, I really, really want something, and I want it right away, and I didn't really have the patience to wait two, three, four years to get a degree and then become a programmer. Um, I wanted the fastest path and, and the most efficient path to get there. And so before I made the decision, what I did was I reached out to a ton of people and did a lot of research on this, right? So first I met with a bunch of people who went the traditional path and they had a CS degree. And I kind of talked to them and talked to them about how they got to um, what their first job was like, how they, how they made that transition from school to getting their first job and so forth. And then I met a bunch of people who were more the non-traditional path, who were either self-taught, went to a boot camp or both. And... Um, and I kind of talked to them about their process for how they kind of broke in to become, so become a software engineer. And at the end of this whole research process, what I realized was, yes, there's a lot of people who take, a, to take the traditional path of getting a computer science degree, but there's also hundreds or thousands of people who are totally, totally killing it without a degree. Um, top of my mind, some examples of people who I really look up to who fit in this bucket are like Dan Abramov, who's the creator of Redux, or Paul Irish, who now works at Google, or my really good friend Hasib Qureshi, who was a poker player turned software engineer. Just like countless examples that I saw in the industry. And what's common amongst all these different people were that they were passionate, they were determined, and they were smart. And, at that, and they just wanted this really badly, and they figured out a way to do this without the degree. So... I was like, okay, if these people can do it, I can do it too, right? And um, I think when you're kind of making this, this decision, it's important to just be honest with yourself. And so when I look back and think through why I think I might have been successful without the degree is, you know, there's, there's a few different reasons I can think of. One is that um, I kind of already had a technical background. So in college, I was a systems engineer, and I, you know, because of that, I took a lot of pretty heavy, high-level high math and engineering courses. So I already, like, I was already kind of trained to think very analytically. I was very good with math and very good with numbers. But that's not to say that you need a technical degree to be a developer. I think I know plenty of people who studied, like, philosophy or psychology in college and then later on in life realized they want to be developers. But for me, like, I think that was one of the reasons why I was pretty successful in this transition. 
And um, second, I was obviously extremely passionate about it. And, and I kind of conveyed this passion throughout various blog posts I've written. And I just wanted this so badly. And I think because I wanted it so badly, I was incredibly determined. I, I worked really hard. And I put, I put a lot, a lot of time and effort into making this reality happen. Um, and, you know, along the way, I did have to give up and sacrifice a lot. Like, for example, I didn't see my family for almost a year during the process. I didn't see a lot of my friends for many, many months. Um, I was pretty much doing this day out, day in and day out, just learning how to code every single day, getting a little bit better at it. And um, even, you know, even my boyfriend I didn't see for like, you know, I saw him once a week, which is like really, really hard, obviously. But um, you kind of, I, I was kind of willing to give up these things because I knew that I wanted this dream to come true so badly. Um, and I think uh, this might motivate some people. So early on in my decision process, I was talking to a really good mentor and, you know, he was, he's this kind of um, highly academic person who has a CS degree and he has a PhD in computer science. Um, you know, went to Stanford, so very academic. And I was kind of telling him about my decision to go become a software developer. And I was kind of saying like, hey, like, I don't know, like one thing I'm worried about is how will I ever catch up with these people who've been programming since they were 12 years old? They literally have like a decade of experience over me and maybe even a college degree. And what he said, he looked at me in the eye and he's like, what I see in you is grit and passion. Um, you're going to get there in no time. Just just go for it. And when someone like that said that to me, someone who's academic and has a degree, and he just like, he's like, no, you can do it without it. Like, just go figure it out. It's all about just doing. And that, that really was inspiring to me. And I was like, okay, I can do this without the degree. Um, and... Kind of to address his question of, you know, the industry is being flooded with junior developers that don't know enough to be productive. I totally, um, I've heard this too. Uh, there's definitely a lot of people who are trying to get into the industry more than ever now. And, you know, everyone kind of wants to be software developers, it seems. And sure, there's probably a lot of developers out there who are simply not ready for full-time jobs. And maybe they're getting hired, but they're not being productive. And... But, you know, like, as I said, there's plenty of examples to show out there of people who are totally killing it in the industry without a degree. Um, the main thing to understand, though, is that it's not easy. It just takes a lot of hard work, and there's really just no shortcuts. Not getting a degree doesn't mean that you take a shortcut. It simply means that you work really, really, really extra, extra hard to kind of make up for that lack of degree, right? You can't just expect to maybe take a course online or attend a three-month boot camp or take like, you know, like an online boot camp like Udacity or something and then all of a sudden magically have a job. Um, you can do all those things, but that's just one part of the process. And in addition to that, you have to put hours and hours of practice and work and, and really just make up for that time that you didn't spend in school getting a degree. And so um, to not be one of those people who are, you know, not being productive in the industry, you just need to go above and beyond. And every person I know who's successful in the industry um, that doesn't have a degree, they're successful because they've put these hours and dedicated their lives to making this reality come true. Um, so again, if you're willing to put the hard work, then you honestly just won't be one of these developers who's not productive. I actually have never met someone who's worked that hard and, and, and like didn't get better over time or wasn't the, one of the better, pro best programmers I've ever met, right? Um, and even if it takes you longer to get there than, than some others, just don't compare yourself to other people. It's just about putting in the hours, putting in the time, practicing, coding, um, getting projects in your, under your belt. Like, you know, it, it's frustrating. Like, the first few months are very frustrating. Just keep trying, keep trying. And over time, like, you'll look, you'll look up and you're like, oh, my God, I just know so much. How did I get – how did I even get here, right? And – I think um, if I had to go back and think, one of the hardest part about not taking this path of not getting a degree is probably getting your first interviews and getting your first job because you don't have you don't have any experience, you don't have anything to show that you you can code basically, and so um, what I would do like as I as I said in my last video, if you don't have something like if you don't have a degree, if you don't have experience, don't focus on what you don't have. Show them everything else that you do got. So this can be this can be like um, this can be like side projects, or this can be like internships, or this can be like open source work that you've done, or blog posts that you've written. Um, you just make up for that lack of degree in other ways, right? And um, 
another thing I want to empathize is if you choose to not get a degree, one thing that happened to me was I noticed that like I was starting to, I, wa I really wanted to fill in my gaps of some of the formal fundamental CS stuff, like things like computer networking, operating systems, compilers, algorithms and data structures, design patterns. Like These are things I still wanted to learn because I think those are very, very important to, if we were going to be a serious software engineer, these are all important things to learn. And so what I did was I would learn these things on the side um, on weekends or nights just like picking up a few books and um, just like learning learning them on my own because I, I really wanted to fill in those gaps that I didn't get um, through formal training. And I actually have met with a few companies now that are actually um, specifically targeting people who don't have CS degrees but are software engineers and they're teaching more of these CS fundamentals. Like I met at a school called Bradfield School of Computer Science in San Francisco and they teach things like, you know, computer networking, computer architecture, databases, compilers. So, you know, like find something like this to fill in the gaps if you don't get that formal training. And instead, if you take more of a um, online course or a boot camp approach. And lastly, um, uh, the, the writer who wrote in said he wants to be a C++ developer without a CS degree. Um, or he's, he's asking if you should get a CS degree to be a C++ developer. Obviously, I can't answer that question because I've never tried that myself. Um, uh, I was a JavaScript developer and I also did some API work and backend work. Like I slowly moved down the stack. Um, but my gut tells me it's definitely possible. Perhaps there's less C++ content and a lot more content to learn online with JavaScript, Ruby, or Python. But um, I think anything in, anything in the world is possible without a degree. So if, you, if you're confident that you can do it, um, I don't think you, I, I'm never going to say that you must get a degree to do anything because I just don't believe that. Um, but I do want to say that just because I didn't go back to get a CS degree, it doesn't by any means mean that I think a CS degree is a waste of time. In fact, if I was in high school and I knew what I know now about computer science, I'd probably do the computer science degree over the systems engineering degree that I did. But, you know, like no regrets. At the time when I was, in, you know, 18, I really fell in love with systems engineering. I loved my major. Um, so I have no regrets. It's just that I learned about computer science a little bit later in life. So um, I didn't have a chance to take CS in college. But I think a CS degree, if you're still in high school, is obviously incredibly valuable. And you should totally do it if you're in high school. Um, but it's not game over if you haven't, if, you're, if it's too late. Um, there's always ways to, to learn how to be a developer like I did and many others have done. So um, I want to close off by saying if you want to be a developer, um, you just need to start doing. Um, you just need to start building because being a developer is not about sitting in a classroom or taking exams or taking tests or getting certificates or getting a degree. It's really about just building software. And if you can prove to people that you can build software, the degree is just a, a tiny part of it and that will soon be irrelevant in, in the future. And, um, and and as I said, there's just been thousands of people who've been successful without the degree. And it really just depends on how much effort, work, and hard work you're willing to put into this. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my rationale for why I didn't take that path. But um, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in next week's video.